Well, here we are, week number five of the USFL. I know, halfway through the season. Crazy. Crazy, right? Crazy. Um, you know, you got a players union coming, you know, United Steelworks, I believe they work. I'm not sure who exactly United Steelworks is. I think they've, I've, I've read that they've worked with the XFL, the AAF, I'm not sure on that, but I mean, hey, a union, that, that's one of the things that's been trending this week about the USFL. The other thing is we got some good games. Oh boy, we got some good games this weekend. I don't know how I'm going to be able to watch all of these this weekend, because I do have to, uh, I have to try my best to get, get working, and the week so far has not been kind to me, but I'm going to try my best to get, get, get things done, you know, and get this money and so we can continue to be where I am and continue to, you know, make it happen. Um, but Friday night, Friday night, it's going to be a Friday night, you know, a nice little, a nice little appetizer for the weekend to come. And because uh, we're, there's also some indoor football going on that night as well. <laughs> but Michigan, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay favored by two and a half. The over under 33 and a half here. Reggie Corbin gotta be that guy for the Panthers, I think. Um, there's also Travis Feeney for the Bandits. He's been a pretty interesting character. A lot of a lot of interesting defensive guys that I want to highlight this week. Um, you know, he's definitely been one of those guys that's been kind of just he hasn't he hasn't done too much, but he but his presence has been felt. You know, Feeney's presence has been felt throughout the season. And for Michigan, you know, they, they just got to keep running the ball. I, I, I'll say this, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it three times, I'll say it nine times, I'll say it 250 times. They got to run the ball. And if they feed Reggie Corbin, I think that, that'll be a successful recipe for them. I'm taking Michigan. I'm taking Michigan in this game. I'm not taking Tampa Bay. I'm taking Michigan in this game. I'm taking the over here. I'm taking the over. I'm taking the over. You know, I think I think we're at that point where we can start taking the overs. If I were a betting man, because you can't bet in Texas, you know, you can't bet like that in Texas. Um, but if I were a betting man, I'm taking the over. I'm taking Michigan to win this game. Saturday is just one game. New Orleans, New Jersey are honestly probably the best game of the weekend. It's a shame it's at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, such a weird time, you know, because, I mean, you know, you got a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be watching a lot of lacrosse, baby, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, the Breakers run defense, a suffocating Breakers run get, run defense, and the Generals ground attack, the best in the league. Um, New Orleans is favored by three. The over-under here, 36 and a half, and I think we're going to go with the under here. Uh, but I am going to take New Jersey to win this game, you know. You know, despite the fact that there's Kyle Slaughter out there, despite the fact that Jordan Ellis is there, despite the fact that Jonathan Adams is there, you know, I, I think this combination of Luis Perez, DeAndre Johnson, is it's something to behold. And the Generals' defense has continued to do their thing the past few weeks themselves. I think they can, you know, get it together. I think they got what the, they got what it takes. You know, maybe they can stop New Orleans. I think they got what it takes. So. So New Jersey, you know, I'm hoping for you. So I'm taking the other dogs twice already. Birmingham, Philadelphia. Birmingham is favored by six. And the over under here, 36 and a half. I am taking Birmingham to win this game. I'm not, I'm, I'm sure Case Cook is, can do fine, but he probably, but he, you know, he did a wonderful job last week. Don't get me wrong. But Philadelphia should have lost that game last week against Michigan. <laughs> but Michigan, you know, doing the 21 yarder. Uh, he he does need to continue to be the leader for the stars. I, I do think that you know Cookus does need to continue to be the leader, but I think Birmingham has it more. You know you got Victor Bolton out there. You know despite the fact that Birmingham struggled a little bit, they've struggled a little bit at times. You know especially last week, but I think they got what it takes, and I think they will beat Philadelphia. And then the other game on Sunday, Pittsburgh, Houston, Houston favored by five and a half. The over under thirty three and a half. I'm taking Houston in this game, of course. Kyle Lalletta is now the Mahler starting QB. He played a little bit last week. He played pretty well. That didn't mean anything because Pittsburgh still lost. And I think, you know, guys like Micah Abernathy are 
chopping at the bit. They're chopping at the bit here to get after the Maulers. You know, the Maulers, you know, just haven't had any success at all. Like, it, it, it's just been a topsy-turvy type here. And I know Josh Love got traded as well. But it, it's been a topsy-turvy year for the Maulers so far. And through five weeks, you know, you made it to where the XFL unfortunately could not make it because of the pandemic. So, USFL... You made it halfway through your season. Now, deliver on your promise of giving us some good spring football in not only this weekend, but in the second half of the season as well. And with all that being said, I'm going to get on up out of here. I will see you all in about an hour, maybe, maybe even less than an hour, maybe like 30 minutes or so. We're talking the NFL schedule, baby. Oh, boy, it's, it's getting juicy already if you've seen some of the leaks. But I'll see you all soon with the NFL schedule reaction.